Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. In this video I'm going to show you how to install Pi-hole on Proxmox. If you're not familiar with it, Pi-hole is a very versatile tool to do whole network ad blocking, but it can do a lot more than that. You don't have to use Proxmox in order to use Pi-hole. In fact, a while back I did a video on how to install it as a Docker instance on Synology NAS. If you're interested in that, I will put a link to this video in the top right corner. So we are going to install Pi-hole and then I'm going to show you how to configure it to get it up and running. I'm going to also show you how to take Pi-hole just a step further and do just a little bit more than just regular ad blocking. And then we're going to spend a minute on how to implement Pi-hole into your network. There are several ways you can go about doing that, each method with, it, with its own advantages and disadvantages. So guys, enough talking, let's get to work. Alright guys, so we are at the computer and obviously as a prerequisite for you to follow along with me is that you already need to have a Proxmox node up and running. I am planning on doing a tutorial on how to install one in the future, but for now there are a lot of uh, YouTube tutorials out there, but you need to have a Proxmox node already up and running. Alright, so in order to get to work, I'm going to use scripts made by TTEC, I hope I'm, I'm pronouncing it correctly, and of course the link to this webpage is going to be in the description of this video. This guy or these guys are doing amazing work creating top-notch scripts that saves you a lot of time configuring everything yourself. So I'm going to put a link in the description, but I also am going to link to, uh, to their GitHub page. I will just encourage everyone to go and give them a star because they are doing an amazing work offering their scripts to use for free. Alright, so all you have to do is to go into this link and we're going to, we're going to select Adblocker DNS, we're going to select Pi-hole, and this is the script, click on copy, this is all you need. These are the defaults, by the way, we'll see, I will show you where, where we'll encounter them in just a little bit. Let's go back to our Proxmox host, into the shell, and just paste the script. Press enter, and that's it, the process has begun. Now, we, are, we have two options here. One is the extra easy one with all the defaults pre-selected. And the one I'm going to show in this video that I recommend that you do with me is just a little bit, and I mean it, just a little bit more involved with just a few more extra questions. I recommend that you do this way with me just to maybe eliminate the need for you to go back and then try to change some, something manually. So just follow along with me. Let's go ahead and proceed. I'm not going to use the default settings. I'm going to use the advanced way. All right, let's continue, continue. I'm going to select Ubuntu, click enter. You, by the way, you make your selection with, this, with a click on the space bar. I'm going to select the latest versions, the latest version, sorry, enter. I'm going to select unprivileged just because it's more secure that way. Click OK. Root password, select whatever works for you and type it once again. Container ID, again, it's up to you. Host name, again, it's up to you. Disk size, I'm going to select eight gigs just because I want more room to breathe. CPU cores, is, it's just fine. I'm going, to sell, I'm going to increase RAM to one gig, although 512 is plenty. Select the bridge, again, according to your uh, environment. I'm not going to use DHCP. It's very important that your Pi-hole, that will be actually your DNS server, will have a static IP. I'm going to select a static IP that suits my environment. And slash 24, because it's a 24 subnet network. Click OK. Gateway IP, that will be the IP address of my firewall or router. Okay. 
okay i'm going to disable I, uh, ipv6 just because i know i don't have any use for it but again this is up to you okay 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 villain if you want to place the virtual machine on any one of your villains that will be the place to get to assign the villain tag for me i will just leave it blank i am going to enable root ssh access just because we will need to do some uh, shell uh, commands afterwards so click on yes verbose mode why not and ready to create indeed now now the question is on which storage you want to place the uh, pi-hole server so select the one that suits you and click ok and now the process is going to uh, to initiate this process can take a minute or two or three minutes it depends i'm going to pause the recording and i'm going to resume it towards the end there's another question that we need to answer so uh, hold on with me all right guys so this is actually the last question we need to answer would you like to add unbound now i am going to talk about unbound in a future video unbound is a very robust implementation of dns for now just click yes and enter and now the process will be finished in just a minute all right so the process is complete it's done in fact here is the link if you want if you want to go into the pi hole web interface but just before you do that there are a few things we need to do before first of all i recommend that you restart your newly created pi hole container but don't be fooled to just type reboot here because that will just reboot your entire host so make sure you select the newly created container and select reboot that's the first thing the second thing is even if we'll try to go into the web interface of pihole we will not be able to log in there's a, a small thing that we'll need to do before that if we we'll go back to the script page you will see that we will need to set a password using this command so make sure to copy that and we'll just wait for a newly created container to go back online. Let's go to the console and let's log in. Type the password that you typed uh, along the uh, script questions and we're logged in. Now type sudo and the command from the script and select a password that will be the password to access your pihole web interface now that we're done let's go ahead and try to log in to our pihole web interface and that's our pihole now let's try to log in with a password we have just set using the second command all right we're in so that means that our pihole has been installed it's up and running but before we can actually make it work for us there are a few things that we want to do the first one is to go into settings and dns right now for every dns query pihole will not know to resolve on its own it will send it forward but it will send it to itself which will fail so uncheck that and let's select for example google dns servers or open dns these will be our upstream servers so every every add pi hole will identify it will block for everything else it doesn't know it will send it upwards to dns or open uh, to google or open dns dns servers that's what that's what we want so click on save so at this point at this point pihole is actually up and running it will actually do web sort of add filtering but as you can see out of the box pihole only has about uh, 160 uh, thousand domain lists or or known domains of ads that it will block but that's just really using i don't know 20 maybe even less percent of pi hole capabilities and as i said in the intro there's a, a very good way to make pi hole really next level 
and that's by adding or introducing more add lists. If we'll go into add lists right here, we will see that we only have the just the default one out of the box and that's really not enough. So there is a website that I'm going to link in the description of this video that offers a lot of other additional lists. For example, more ad lists or suspicious websites list or malicious websites list. Now you can see that Pi-hole can even be some sort of a, a layer in the security of your network. So if you want to add a list, all you have to do is right click, copy link, go back to your pie hole, paste the URL right here, add a comment if you want, click on add. Now, I recommend that you add lists slowly, meaning add one or two, see that you don't have any, I don't know, false positives, I'm going, to, I'm going to add just a few of them. All right, now that I have added a few lists, it's not enough. We'll need to actually restart the DNS filtering engine of Pi-hole. We can do it by going into Tools, open it up, Update Gravity, and click on Update. Now that we have updated our gravity, that means the gravity engine, the DNS filtering engine. If we go to our dashboard, we can see that now we have more domains that we will, uh, that, that Pi-hole, sorry, will, will block or filter. Now, just before we finish this video, I do want to talk about how to implement Pi-hole now that it's installed, now that it's configured, how to actually go about using it on your network. There's, a, there's actually two main ways you can do that. The first one is the simplest one, is to just go into your uh, router or firewall or your DHCP server and add Pi-hole as one of the DNS servers in your DHCP. I'm using a unified Dream Machine Pro, so in order to do that, I will go into my unified device, I'll go into settings, network, and for example on my clients, VLAN, I will scroll down to my DHCP settings, options, and then I will change this IP address to the IP address of my pie hole. And maybe I will give another DNS server in case something happens to the pie hole, the, the client will just skip the pie hole and try the second DNS server. Advantages, it's very easy to set up, and in Pi-hole, when we look at our logs, every client will identify itself as the one who initiated this DNS query. That's a great thing. But in a more complex environment, let's take my environment for example, I have a VLAN for IoT devices. This VLAN cannot access anything on any other VLAN. So if I want Pi-hole to filter ads on my IoT VLAN, for example, I will need to create one for my internal VLANs and another Pi-hole instance just on my IoT VLAN. And that's just a little bit more cumbersome. Another way to use Pi-hole to, let's say, to skip this issue altogether is to not set the Pi-hole as a DNS server in, in the DHCP options of every VLAN. Instead, skip one level above and go into your internet settings and then set Pi-hole as one of the DNS servers for your internet connection. By that, what we will manage is that every device on every VLAN, not, doesn't matter which VLAN can access any other, each device that's on the, on the network will create a DNS query. The, near, the DNS query will go up to the firewall. The firewall, if it doesn't know to, the, to resolve it, which it doesn't, it will send it to the DNS servers li listed here. In this case, it will be the pie hole. 
and the pie hole will do the add blocking and if, if it doesn't know what to do else with the query it will send it upwards to the D DNS servers we have configured right here. Any DNS query PyHole doesn't know how to resolve on its own, it will send it upwards to these upstream servers. So that's exactly what I am going to do. But before that, I'm going to cancel out. I have a virtual machine I would like to do some testing on. Let's go into the console. All right, so this is the virtual machine. Now let's open network connections and we can see that's our IP address and here are our DNS servers. None of them is a pie hole. And on my internet, none of the, on my firewall, I mean, none of these servers are a pie hole. And in the DHCP, just to verify, none of these servers is a pie hole. So if I'll go back to my virtual machine and let's say, and let's try to open a web page that's notoriously full of ads and that's, that's the correct address. And as you can see, we're full of ads, full of them. And now what I'm going to do, I am going to introduce the Pi-hole IP address as a DNS server on my internet connection. So that's really uh, an entire network ad filtering. Let's click on apply. Now that can take a few minutes until it takes effect. The best way in order to, I don't know, force this to be uh, refreshed is to restart your a firewall or router. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. All right, so my firewall has finished its restart process and I just want to show you in PyHole, in query log, we already start to see DNS queries coming in from clients to the PyHole itself. Some of them gets blocked, some of them doesn't. If I want to somehow maybe unblock something that I want, that I know is legit, I can just whitelist and this address will not be blocked again. And the other way around, if I know something I want to block but isn't, I'll just select to blacklist. But just by that, just by going to the query log and seeing queries inside this, uh, this log page here, means the traffic, DNS traffic, flows through and gets processed by Hole. So with that note, let's go back to our client and let's just as good measure open up CMD. Again, we don't have to, I'm just doing it for good measure and let's do ipconfig release, ipconfig renew. I am going to relaunch my web browser and I am going to go again to speedtest.net. Remember, before this page was full of ads. Let's see now. And just like that, you can see with your own eyes, no ads. That means that PyHole is actually doing what it's supposed to do, which is great. That means that our implementation is working. Again, there's a way, there's a method to just assign PyHole IP address as a DNS server on your DHCP or to use PyHole as a DNS server on your internet connection. Each case, in each case, there's advantages and disadvantages. If I haven't mentioned that, the disadvantage of doing it the way I did it as a DNS server on my internet connection is that devices will not be able to identify themselves correctly in PyHole, meaning that all you will see in, in the uh, query logs in client will not be each individual device, it will just be the IP address of my firewall. That's the advantages and disadvantages. All right guys, I hope you liked this video and I hope it helped you. If you did, please give it a like. This will help the channel a lot. Giving this video a like 
means that you have liked this video it will tell the youtube algorithm that it's a good video and that more people should watch it and this will be a major support for me all right guys hope to see you all in the next video bye everyone